Hello, and welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So, I was going to do a video today on, on uh, finishing up the press brake die, because i got a job coming for this machine, but instead, I find I need to make different ones of our handy little clamps. So, that's what we're going to do instead. So, I'm going to move over to the bridge port. I'm going to well saw this material first. Um, this is some 4140 that's uh, annealed left over from a job and uh, we're just going to turn this into some much taller clamps, angled clamps, just for this purpose. So we'll get that material sawed and get over to the bridge port and start milling and, and drilling and tapping. So our pieces are all cut. They're four and a half inches long. They're 4140 annealed, inch and a quarter by two. And it's overkill, obviously. I don't need anything this wide or this heavy, but this will work to my advantage as well because it is so heavy. Um, this will double as being usable on my horizontal boring mill as well. So I've got 10 of them cut, and what we need to do first is mill a step in them in the back side where they'll drop into the T-slot. Now the T-slot is 810. The, that was the smallest measurement I got, so 812, 13 sixteenths, but we're going to mill them at 800, so they're a pretty tight fit, inch and three eighths up. So the step will be on the back side, back here. So the bolts will go in this way. I'm going to probably do two of them just so I can use these on multiple things, but when, with it on the back side, that'll give it a little extra um, something on the table so it don't want to tip as much. So that's what we're going to do. And I apologize for the, the audio quality. I do have new equipment coming. i um, hoping it works. I don't know if it's going to, but I hope it does. Um, but if I don't shoot this stuff, you're never going to see it. So i got to stick with the crappy equipment i got right now. And uh, hopefully you get the idea and understand and, and uh, continue on with us as we try to improve. But... Uh, so anyway, let's uh, get melon these. got our pieces milled, and while I was thinking about it, um, I was thinking while I was milling, because uh, you got time to do that, uh, how I only had 5 a threaded rod that would have worked for this, and I thought that's just too small for something this heavy. Well, I remembered I had some 7 a 14 out in the trailer from uh, left over from my sawmill when I built that. So, we're going to drill and pass this for 7 a 14 Now, I want to kind of show these though while I'm here. So this is a piece of um, pallet banding. And you bend it into a Z, you put that down in your vise like that and it holds your parallel to the back. Another option, and I picked this up at an estate sale I went to, is one of these spring-loaded parallel keepers. And they work good. Um, but you know, the tighter you get it down there, more difficult it is to work with, and I just didn't want to fight with it, so I just used my, my pre bent ones. So, what we need to do now is we need to tip the head on our bridge port 10 degrees. And to do that, we loosen these four nuts here, which do that. And then back here, you turn this and there's 
a great gradient scale on here for the line, and you just line it up, tighten her back down. This, this isn't something precision, we're just going to 10 degrees to get the down pressure. When we tighten it down, it'll push the part down and hold it to the table better. So we're just going to set this all up. The other thing about this is that you have to, when you set this up and you get your, let's, we're going to um, center drill it and then spot face it and then drill and tap. Well, you don't want to be changing the height of your table at all. Don't, if you change it, that's going to throw off your position of your hole because you're changing. You, you lower it, that moves the stroke, or your stroke is coming this way. So if you come, say you're lined up now, and you lower that table, now your quill is coming down over here. If you raise it, now you're coming in over here. So you don't want to change the height of your table. So you pick, get all your tooling out and ready and laid out and figure out what you have traveled for. And figure all that height out and everything before you even start, before you make the first cut. So I'm going to go ahead and get this set up at 10 degrees and then I'll start set, I'll get this all set up for, for the first cuts and then we'll start working. This is done. We got this piece all done. It'll sit in there in our T-slot and then the threaded rod, which is right here, will go into it and that'll be what pushes the part and pushes it down. So what I need to do on the one end is face it off and take about a quarter inch of the threads just past the threads off so that way when it starts mushrooming I can still get it out. So let's get that going. to just, I got a bunch of nuts. I'm just going to weld a nut on the end of this so that we got something to put the wrench on. But there they are. Pretty simple, basic tool. Um, you can make one yourself. Just measure out your T-slot and make them so they're a fairly close fit um, because you don't want them loose so they rock. Like my old ones were just three-quarter inch stock and it just, it, they, they cocked back some. So it, it worked, but it wasn't great. These are going to give me a lot more height and a lot more adjustment. So these are going to work much better for me 
and they'll they'll work over on the horizontal boring mill as well. They'll fit same T slot size there. So just a very handy tool. These were in an old book um, that I had, and it was that was a whole section on planers, and that was one of the tools that was shown in the book about pla with planers. So um, something you can make pretty easy. Uh, you learned how to adjust the head on the bridge port just to, to kick it over a little. Um, I showed you my uh, parallel keepers, my different styles of parallel keepers. The, the steel banding is always the cheapest and they work really well and if you lose one, oh well, make another. <laughs> so, um, so hopefully next time here I can get back on that planer and get that press brake die done because I got a job coming in to do on that planer that's eight foot, a little over eight foot. Um, hopefully in the next couple weeks if we can find the material. The material's getting really scarce now. Um, things are getting really difficult. In fact, I just priced out a piece of material that I bought two years ago for a job. Uh, it tripled. Same piece of material. Triple in price. So things are getting weird. Um, welcome to 2021. Well, until next time, like us on Facebook at Topper Machine LLC. You visit our website, www.toppermachine.com. And as always, get out in the shop and get it done right the first time. <laughs>